The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Hello, and welcome once again to the Frankencast. I'm the mad scientist, Anthony Bowman. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined as always by... That really annoying friend that always has like the answers to all of your questions. That is Eric Velasquez. My <laughs> pronouns are also he him. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, so this week we're joined by a very special guest, uh, Paul Serino, author of the disturbingly difficult book of Universal Frankenstein trivia and the disturbingly difficult book of Hammer Frankenstein trivia. <laughs> welcome to the show, Paul. Yeah. Welcome, Paul. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm uh, very, very happy to be here. Long time listener. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that means a lot. Yeah. So when we first um, started doing the show, like one of the things that we kind of like joked about was like one of the reasons we started this was so that, you know, we would get free Frankenstein stuff as promotion. Yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> and you are the first person to send us free Frankenstein stuff. Thank so. you. Really? <laughs> oh, well, you're very welcome. Very welcome. <laughs> I, I had a blast writing them. I had a blast writing them. And uh, normally, uh, I've, this is uh, the Frankenstein books that I wrote are my uh, first attempt at writing outside of my original genre. I'm a paramedic by trade. I've been a paramedic for about 20 years. And uh, I have written about four books on the EMS genre. And... Uh, they sold really well. They, they're, they're doing really well. And so I decided, well, you know, I'm going to give that a break for a second. And I'm going to try and write something that I'm a little bit, you know, also passionate about. And so I looked around and I thought about Frankenstein because, <laughs> and, and, yeah, I know, and it's, it's so weird. But the reason why I did it and the reason why I decided to write a book about trivia and more importantly, it started out as a book of rankings. I love, I love things that are like a series. I love the James Bond series. I love the Star Wars series. I love things that can be ranked. So I look at all different movies, and then I start to rank them. And I have friends who are constantly getting emails from me, you know, for today's top ten list of actors or top ten list of my favorite books or my top ten. I've got constantly. I'm constantly doing these things. So I thought. I'm going to kind of tie these together and put it into a single book. So uh, I decided on Frankenstein because I'm really, really passionate about Frankenstein, but mainly because it had the most movies to to kind right, of rank yeah. at the time. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, having a lot of movies works out in our favor as well. <laughs> it's going to keep us busy for a couple of years. Right. <laughs> so it's a surprising amount, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one thing that like we, we did like an early episode that where we didn't actually cover a movie where we just talked about like uh, what we, we called it. Why Frankenstein? Like, what is it that draws us to uh, this story that that's told over and over again in so many ways? Um, so what is it about Frankenstein that that makes you so passionate? Well, gosh, I, you know, I've ever since I was a young child, I've been really, really fascinated with monsters and I've always been a big they would show a lot of the old universal horror films uh, on Friday, Saturday nights. And those were the nights that I was able to get to stay up late. And I, that was my childhood from about 75 to 78 when I was about, you know, five to eight years old. That's what I lived on. And then all of a sudden I saw Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. And it was just a mind blower because these two different monsters were in the same movie and you didn't see things like that. That you only saw that in comic books. I mean, it wasn't unusual for 
Batman to be in a Superman or the Incredible Hulk to be in a Spider-Man. But you never right. saw that in movies. So when I saw Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, boy, my, you know, they, that became instantly my favorite movie. And I started to watch more and more of the Frankenstein films. Eventually, I gravitated as a professional with the EMS background to the medical profession. So that kind of further cemented my my love and my kind of favorite, uh, you know, monster of Frankenstein. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that so makes kindred, sense. Kin, uh, kindred spirit, as it were. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. But there's so much about Frankenstein. The, the, I think I was talking to, uh, to Anthony about obsession. I mean, and being an EMS and being a paramedic, I have seen that kind of obsession, especially when you are, you're out there in the field and you are, you know, sometimes you have to face some things that are really, really awful and you have to, really really apply yourself to get through it and you have to have kind of a single-minded obsession to get through these things and get to have a successful career in that field right so exactly those kinds of obsessions of you know dr frankenstein things like that boy i can relate to that that yeah. that speaks to me. <laughs> yeah i could definitely imagine in your line of work uh if you had a potion or just the ability to run someone through an electrical charge and just you know fix what was wrong with them that would be uh, very helpful right yeah that would be great that would got so much easier <laughs> right <laughs> so you mentioned that you know frankenstein meets the wolfman was one of your early favorites but you ranked that kind of low in the book yeah. things have changed a little bit it since then yes yes and <laughs> and i'll tell you why and i'm glad you brought that up uh it is actually my least favorite now of all the, oh. of, of the hammer and universal films combined Okay. It would it would rank the least, and <laughs> a number of reasons. Um, gosh, namely Lugosi's performance. I love Bella Lugosi, uh, and boy, you can see that kind of that sixty year old man underneath that Frankenstein <laughs> headpiece, and yeah. he looks like he's struggling. And the more I researched that movie, I, I you know it kind of depressed me about how he could barely stand in the you know in the outfit and it was mainly the stuntmen that were doing it right i also i this is where i started to have a growing displeasure and dislike of larry talbot the the <laughs> character of larry i noticed uh, <laughs> I, that is one of my least favorite if not my least favorite character i mean the the original 41 wolf band keeps him a little bit above above uh, the water but boy I mean, it, it, he dwindles down in the uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolf Band, and boy, by the time he is at House of Dracula, it is, he is the most irritating and <laughs> unlikable character that I have ever seen in any monster movie. Yeah, I believe uh, you mentioned he was a little whiny. <laughs> the and, most. Yeah, I, whiny. I mean, yeah, the most whiny. I mean, that's right. <laughs> The most whiny. I mean, I don't see how anybody could relate to somebody like, oh, I can't go out. I can't go. The yeah. moon, the moon. And then what really drove me over the edge was that he complained and he complained about uh, the, the coming full moon in mm. House of Frank. And I'm sorry, in House of Dracula, they figured it out. They put him in a jail cell and he had to <laughs> suffer in that jail cell, but they kept him contained. They let him out during the day, and they said, okay, you know, we know it's a full moon tonight, man. we got to get you back in there. Nope, yeah. not me, man. <laughs> I am out of here. And he runs off, and he almost <laughs> kills Dr. Edelman. So and he jumps I off mean, how does anybody right. think that this guy is a hero? This guy is the most <laughs> selfish, the most selfish, whiny character in all of Universal Pictures. That I'm going to say that. Fair enough. Now, that you, moment you just, especially, I like him jumping off that cliff was just nonsense. Because they were like, we've almost got the cure. Give us right. one more night. You just got to go in the, the jail cell one more night, and then we'll take care of you tomorrow. And he's like, I nope. can't wait any longer. I'm going to jump off a cliff. Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he goes, Keith Richards on me, man. He is out right. the door. So. I, I think yeah. we even mentioned it's like, he's invincible. What did that do to him? He just <laughs> dove, He just took a swim. That's it. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So crazy, yeah. yeah. So, by yeah. far and away, the that, that movie, the the two combined, the, the, there was no way that the Frankenstein meets the Wolfman uh, could uh, go any lower. Yeah. But if they had if they had gotten Glenn Strange in there to play the monster against Lon Chaney, boy, that would have changed everything. The dynamic would have changed. And you know what else was a big big complaint of mine? 
was the uh, the the continuity with Ghost of Frankenstein, where mm-hmm. you know after mm-hmm. Ghost of Frankenstein, they left it with this big kind of Bela Lugosi as the Igor is now in the body of the monster. Right. I can't yeah. see. I'm blind. What's going to happen next? Well, the, the he gets burned up, but he comes back. And then all of a sudden, they've cut out all of Bela Lugosi's dialogue throughout Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. So there is absolutely no explanation why <laughs> Frankenstein walks around with his hands out in front of him and his eyes are closed. And, you know, sometimes you can see him mouthing things to Larry Talbot, but it's, <laughs> it's silent. Yeah. yeah, I would I would love to have seen what that looked like, what they cut out of that. It would have been a completely different movie. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, n- since we're speaking of Bela Lugosi and Igor, so, like, I know what draws us to Igor. He's, he's, a, he's a great conniving, like, villain that manages to convince everybody to go with him. But, like, wh- what do you think about Igor, the original? Oh. oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. It's the same kind of appeal that Hannibal Lecter had or that uh, Heath Ledger's Joker had. It's that charisma of a villain who is able to orchestrate and manipulate the the protagonist so that he gets his own uh, goals accomplished at the same time thinking that the protagonists are one step ahead of him. And, you know, it's just a it's a fascinating uh, character. I mean, I love Igor, especially when he's sitting in court and they're, you know, they're questioning him and he's like, Hey, I, I didn't do anything. I didn't I know nothing. I know nothing. I good. I work for Dr. Frankenstein. So it's really good. <laughs> yeah, but he is a, a truly diabolical character. I mean, he is a despicable character. And you know, N- Bella Lugosi's best performance ever, when he says that we're all dead, we're all dead here. That's the best line of any of the Frankenstein films. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I saw you know I saw that you've got Son of Frankenstein at number one on your rankings, and like I think that's probably a controversial ranking, but like I have so much respect for that. Like I feel like that movie does not get nearly the credit that Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein do. Yeah, well, it had the biggest budget at the time, and uh, I mean they had a, a huge star. I mean when when Colin Clive couldn't, you know, he passed on before uh, Son of Frankenstein was in production, so. They fished it out, and they got, you know, Sherlock Holmes, Basil Rathbone to come in and play Wolf on Frankenstein. I mean, the the whole thing, the whole gambit was just just set up perfectly with the Igor character and the way that they introduced it back. The weirdest thing was, and the one thing, again, with the continuity was, it's set, you know, 20 years or so past The Bride of Frankenstein, so, but they never really explain that. I mean, you have to kind of figure that out that Frankenstein's, the, the monster has been kind of on the loose and on the go with Igor so, you know, for a good part of this time. Yeah. It's, a weird, it's a weird continuity, but boy, what a fun movie. What a fun, fun movie. I go back and forth with Bride and, uh, and the original. I mean, you cannot go wrong with those three. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, 100%. So let's talk about, uh, let's bring up the ghost in the room. Uh, um, the ghost of Frankenstein, I mean. <laughs> Oi. Yeah. <laughs> Oi. That's, that's another one that, boy, it could have been, it, it could have been so great. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it could have been, if they could have managed to get Basil Rathbone back somehow, or they could have get, you know, someone in their, you know, 20s or 30s to play the doctor instead of, you know, Cedric Hawthorne, who is, you know, he has to be in his 60s. He has to be either in his 50s or 60s. And he's supposed to be the younger brother of Wolf on Frankenstein. Right. <laughs> I, I could forgive the continuity errors, but boy, he's just the most dull and bland. I mean, he is. It would have been so much more interesting if they had focused on uh, Dr. Bromer, on uh, Lionel Atwell's character, who is, you know, he was infinitely more interesting and he had a little bit more of a character arc than than Ludwig Ludwig okay. Frankenstein. So it was yeah, the ghost of Frankenstein. You know, I, I even like I even gave a passing grade to Lon Chaney's performance as the as the monster. I mean, coming off of uh, off, off of uh, Boris Karloff, who I cannot believe if you read that new book. I, I don't know. Side note here, but uh, that new book by Stone, the uh, It's Alive, where he talks about the production of Frankenstein. I mean, if you talk, if you read that and you you know figure out if, if this is somewhat true, 
Boris Karloff was dead broke, dead broke before he got Frankenstein. And he was so grateful. He could never understand how anybody could turn down work. Yeah, he could. Right. He was in awe that Bela Lugosi turned down the role of Frankenstein. And yet he, you know, come, you know, nine, ten years later, he did not want to reprise the, the monster in Ghost of Frankenstein. So I got a little upset about that. But Lon <laughs> Chaney did an admirable job as the, as the monster in, in that film. I think that it just mainly sinks because of uh, the poor choice of the doctor and that horrible, you know, that sequence of the actual ghost the of ghost. Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, Heinrich Frankenstein, right. which That's was just basically of... hot. Right? Yeah, with a, with a wig on, with a bad wig on and a, and a weird kind of blurring effect. It was, it was it's, a bad it's film. such a strange choice that they like that's the title of the movie and then the ghost is in it for all of you know yeah a minute yeah maybe yeah yeah it could have been the revenge it could have been the return but i mean now it was the ghost <laughs> or the Oy. ghost could have actually been a character <laughs> or the ghost could have been a character yeah, yeah. but yeah um uh, yeah maybe i i put it too low but i mean it's it's still it's still one of the bottom ones i mean all almost all of the hammer films are better than than the ghost of Frankenstein and uh, oh, the Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Yes, <laughs> I wasn't well, also. I also was not a big fan of the Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I mean, I know, I know, and I know that that's ranked quite high in a lot of people's <laughs> opinions. But yeah, yeah. I, I just, uh, again, I just i i liked i liked John uh, Carradine uh, as the uh, as the bon- as Dracula, Count Dracula. I, I liked him in both House of Dracula and House of Frankenstein. Why did they just keep him in there? But uh, I, you know, Bela Lugosi just looks so old. He looked he looked older than Boris Karloff in the Mummy. So I thought that he was. <laughs> I mean, I it, it, he was just tough to see him do that. It was like watching, you know, like it was like watching Muhammad Ali at the end of his career. You didn't want to see him. You didn't want to see him go down like that. So yeah. I would have preferred to have not seen that and had Bela Lugosi just kind of do the one off in uh in the 31 version yeah yeah, yeah and, i take it you guys are abbott and Costello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i i'm fond of that one i i do agree it's a really weird way to end the series that it's yeah. just like such a hard left turn right uh, you know going yeah. from you know what six serious movies and then just have a comedy at abbott the end. And Costello, yeah yeah I, I, I enjoy it for its own but... thing, but it does feel yeah. weird in the series. In my mind, it's kind of divorced from the the mainline series. It's yeah, I mean, yeah. it's technically technically in line, but you know, it's its own thing, its own animal. <laughs> Do you guys have a preference between the uh, the Universal and the Hammer Frankenstein's? I, I've I've made my statements in the past, but I'm okay <laughs> with it. So I do I do like the Universal, but you know, I'm a little trashy at heart so i do kind of i dig the uh the hammer just a just a little scoosh more that's it ah uh, that's that's my <laughs> guy right there yeah and i, and I especially I, like the little shit of a, a, a doctor that the original uh frank or the uh peter cushing uh frankenstein in the very first one mm-hmm. oh yeah <laughs> yeah i just love it yeah, I think I lean a little bit more towards Universal, but it's because I grew up with them. I didn't see the Hammer ones until I was in like college, and I'd watched the Universal ones many times over by that point. Um, so I mean, I still love the Hammer ones, but you, you know, it's it's hard to to get past that that nostalgia for me with the original ones. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I agree. There, there's no way. There's no way that the the first three Universal films could ever be beat. I mean, I, I mm-hmm. think if I, I rank That's them fair. all. It would it would still be the first you know Son of Frankenstein Bride and then the original but then I would probably put all my Hammer films in there because you know there's a big drop off in the Universal side after Son of Frankenstein oh so. definitely yeah and and, I, and I'm with you Eric I like the uh, I, I I'm a big fan of the uh, Frankenstein and the monster from hell I'm a big right. fan of the uh, the horror of Frankenstein I, I mean <laughs> but boy that you know. They they get a little wacky in those. They ones. do get okay, yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'll accept that. It's like a poker player boy. They just they, I'm going all in. I mean, yeah. when you when you dissolve people all, with the acid baths, I mean, it's just right. like oh, God. boy, they were they were on the yeah. cutting edge back then. Right. What can we do next? How about we have all the inmates 
tear the monster to pieces. Tear apart, yeah, bit by bit. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll put him in a monkey suit. Do you think they'll buy it? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much we could get away with here, but uh, they're going for it. <laughs> we'll put a fishbowl on his head the next time. Right. Yeah. Give, give us the budget. <laughs> Yeah, I think Monster from Hell is probably the most like nonsensical one, but it's still so much fun. Yeah. Well, it, it definitely had the best assistant to that, uh, and I can't for the life of me, I cannot remember his name right now. It had to have been something like Hans, but uh, <laughs> his assistant, the one that was also kind of like emulating his uh, his work, and he had read all of his uh, his papers, and you see him at the beginning of the movie, uh, Patrick Troughton, Doctor Who. Brings him a, a body that he had just freshly <laughs> killed, and you know, then he proceeds to watch himself and knock over a, uh, a, a jar of eyeballs on the ground. Right. <laughs> so, movie like, eyeballs. He, yeah. he gets mad at the Pushy police eyeballs. officer for doing it. The police <laughs> officer right. stone cold catches him with a dead body. You know, <laughs> all the evidence of murder that's going to send him to to the gallows or to the guillotine, and he, he has the audacity to. Get off my eyeballs, man! I gotta pick my <laughs> eyeballs up. Right? It was it was so ridiculous. It. Yeah, it was it was fabulous. I mean, those are the, those are the kinds of movies that you're like, boy, I love that. And and when I was that age, when I was you know that came out in '74, so I was three, four years old. I was still watching the the Universal, but I do remember seeing the the trailer on television, and it was an R. And I remember being like, ah, oh, there's no possible way my parents are gonna take me to go see. <laughs> Yeah, an R-rated movie when I'm you know four years old, so <laughs> I had to wait years. I had to wait years for that, and uh, and the Count Dracula and his Vampire Bride, the other one, the uh, mm. the Satanic Rites of Dracula, I think oh, was what yeah. it was called. They they had to, they waited <laughs> until it was like you know seventy nine eighty to put that out in the, in the United States. Right. Yeah, the Hammer of Dracula ones are, are a lot more lurid. I can definitely like those are like a hard R, like yeah. a lot more, a lot more with the Vampire Bride specifically. There's a lot more sure. to uh, <laughs> people might want to keep their kids away from. But well, uh, I mean, it's hard to mix sex into the Frankenstein mythos. I mean, the the, the one time that they really tried to, you know, it was probably universally decreed uh, the worst scene in all the Frankenstein films. It was the Peter Cushing raping poor veronica yeah in, uh, that was in the ooh. frankenstein must be destroyed i mean yeah. they, they were both against it they did not want to do it and then somebody said i think william hines the pro the owner of hammer said hey man we got to have more sex man have you seen what they're putting out in the united states so <laughs> how, what can we do how do we mix sex right. into this uh peter come here yeah. so, i mean it was horrible <laughs> It was a horrible scene, but yeah, I mean, it was much easier to mix uh, sex into the the vampire kind of Christopher Kind of built Lee. in, right? Yeah. yeah it's all built agree. in. Yeah. Vampires are definitely sexier monsters than, you know, a corpse <laughs> stitched together. <laughs> I mean, depends what you're into. But <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> that may have been too far. I apologize. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, and, and Frankenstein must be destroyed. I, I know you ranked it really high, and I feel like that scene is the thing that, like, otherwise it would be pretty much unquestionably the best yeah. of the Hammer Frankenstein movies. But like that scene is, it's so hard to watch. It's 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 hard to watch, and what makes it even harder when you think back on it. And after looking at it, they 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 added that in late. They filmed it as oh, the last no. part of the of the the movie. They. They were almost completed with it, and that's when they said, we need one more film, uh, one more scene that has a little bit of sex in it. Let's film that. And then they put it in at near the middle or the late in the middle. So all the scenes afterwards, Veronica Carlson kind of interacts with Frankenstein as if yeah. nothing ha happened. Yeah, that but was I really mean, uncomfortable. Yeah, it was very yeah. uncomfortable. But damn it, I want my Frankenstein evil. I want him bad. I mean, by far and away, that's the most nasty I've ever seen him. Which is hard to believe because in continuity, it's the it's the film that follows Frankenstein creates woman, and in that film, Frankenstein creates woman, Peter Cushing plays him almost like Sherlock Holmes. I mean, he is almost a he, he's kind of an arrogant, condescending good guy, but he's no more evil than Doctor House on uh, on the sitcom. I mean, it's 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 mind blowing that he can go from that to just in a couple of years the the character that they chose to do, where he beheads people and uh, <laughs> and. You know the the continuity in the Frankenstein Hammer films is it, boy that if, if one thing yeah that 
the first two, the the curse of Frankenstein, where he's led to the gallows, and then how he how he escapes the gallows in Revenge of Frankenstein, uh, where they tr- they I guess they put the poor priest in the uh, in the guillotine. But... <laughs> right, yeah, the old switcheroo. <laughs> they, yeah, they put him they put him in the in the grave. But yeah, I mean, if that was the case, I that if they could keep that kind of continuity up, boy, that would have been that would have been the best series ever. But then they kind of got greedy, and I think the the next one was the uh, evil of Frankenstein, and uh, that's the one where they got to pair up with Universal. Universal finally yeah. paired mm-hmm. up with Hammer, and they allowed them to use whatever kind of things they could use a Karloff like resemblance for their film. And I, I can't remember the poor makeup man's name, but I remember reading that he had submitted hundreds of designs for the monster. None of them went, none of them went uh, authorized until the very last minute, and they came up with what they, what they gave us, which is probably, without a doubt, either the one or two worst Frankenstein makeup jobs of all time, that uh, evil of Frankenstein, where it's just a, you know, a big glob of I don't know what on his head, plaster right. Paris <laughs> on his head. It looks like a bad toupee. I don't know what's going on. And then, and then you can see clearly the lines. It looks like a paper mache mask on Halloween. <laughs> yeah. It's just horrible. That's it horrible. Is... It, it ranks up there with the monster and the and the the monster from hell as the the worst monsters of all the series. I mean, fair enough. And it's such a disappointment that you have like Hammer and Universal teaming up. It should be like yeah. the best Frankenstein movie, right. and it's really really bad. It's like this is what we got. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, no, it is, it is, it is so disappointing. Especially, it's the it's the biggest potential could have been there. The episode, the 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 plot of that film came from an episode of Tales of Frankenstein, which was a Universal Hammer kind of television conglom- uh, cooperation that they were going to film. It was going to be kind of like a Twilight Zone thing. I think they only got the pilot filmed, but one of the scripts for it was used as the basis for the uh, the episode of evil of Frankenstein with the hypnotist who kind of uh, takes control of the monster from, <laughs> yeah. from poor Baron and like a jilted girlfriend, he has to kind of stomp his feet and get it back. Right. So <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, but they're it, so great. I don't, you know, it's not, it's, it's my, my wife watched it with me. My wife's about seven years younger than me. She's watching it with me. She's going, and why do you like these? <laughs> like, oh, that's, <laughs> the greatest, that's the absolute greatest things in the world. I mean, I love these. <laughs> I'll sit and watch these in minutia with the, you know, the closed caption on and the IMDb trivia page up as I'm charting and looking for all these little things. I could definitely respect that. <laughs> oh yes, it's crazy. It's it, it, so. I, speaking of that, so how do like your your research for the book is so you go through with IMDb trivia and like I mean, how many times did you end up watching these movies for right, uh, for the books? I watched them all one time uh, just just to enjoy it and to get kind of refreshed with it. And then I got pad and paper or a computer out and I watched it, you know, stopping every few seconds when I noticed something was interesting or that I could point something out. What I divided my book into is three parts. It's kind of or actually a little bit more. There's a plot where I kind of go through the movie and I point out interesting things or what i like to do is i'll take a line that a character in the movie says and then i'll try and mimic four different plausible things that sound sort of like it could be right so it's a, it's i try to make it as difficult as i possibly could and then i also did a you know a, a area on production you know the things you know when it was when it was made the budgets if i have any actor salaries i'll get that and then the extremely difficult so things like minutia details or little aspects of you know characters that you might not have ever noticed that's the kinds of things i shot for for this book so boy i had to it took a while to to go through it and i spent a lot of money on not just uh the movies on amazon but i also bought a lot of books and i tried to you know read as many things as i possibly can a lot of the magazines on my on my wall i used as as reference material so okay well done and I also listen to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't know if I would cite us, but I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that means a lot. Because um, <laughs> we're just, yeah, two schmucks who <laughs> like talking about... Like, about, like talk- about scary movies, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
What is your, if, I, if you don't mind me asking, what is your, aside from the Hammer and the Universal, what is your favorite Frankenstein film of all time? I'll let Anthony go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's hard to narrow it down. I would say, re- like, uh, recently, something that's been kind of moved up in, in the rankings for me, I've mentioned this a couple of times, is um, the Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the, the one with uh, Kenneth Branagh directed and starring Robert De Niro and everything. That's sh- one that, like, I should have I liked. let Anthony go first. <laughs> <laughs> no. I really enjoyed that. Or, like, when I watched it, you know, years ago, I was like, oh, that's fine. It's kind of slow. It's a little dry, but it was all right. But then this time when I watched it, I don't know, there was just something that really grabbed me about it. Just, uh, it felt, you know, I mean, it's supposed to be one that's, like, more close to the book, but it, it manages to, like, thread the needle between, like, following the book, but also making it feel more up to date and you know it doesn't spend too much time with like the framing story that i think most people are not particularly interested in uh but robert de niro does a great job of like being the creature and like talking but also not talking too much and and kind of you know like i think karloff had trouble with with the speaking version of the creature uh, of like finding a way to make that feel real and not silly uh and i just think i think uh, De Niro really nailed it and like the, the the scene like the middle of the movie where they're in the ice cave and they're just it's just the doctor and the monster talking that scene just really really hit me hard yeah I think that definitely cemented my like idea of what a Frankenstein monster should be or at least a Frankenstein movie in general should be for the most part now I'm gonna throw a curveball since Anthony took the good one um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say Monster Squad because I am a child of the 80s and I mean <laughs> It, it has everything you need. It, it, I mean, it has the mashup, sure, but it has the the big, the big green guy as one of the lovable heroes. Yeah, absolutely. No, I love that film. Yeah. No, no, I would, I would say it's a left a, a curveball. No, no, a <laughs> curveball would be something like, like the like the Andy Warhol Frankenstein, which right. I have tried. Six, six times to get through, and I have yet to make it all the way through. Boy, have I got an Italian or a Spanish movie for you? <laughs> and it, it is nothing. It's nothing with the gore or the nudity or anything. It's it's the it's the acting. It's it's who do care? So wild. Flesh for Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Flesh for Frankenstein. Yes. Yeah, yeah we, we actually did an episode on that a, a month or two ago, and yeah, it is a wild ride. <laughs> and and if if you haven't gotten to the ending, the ending is is something else too. Like it's a, uh, it's got a really strange ending. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> sure does. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll I'll watch that. I'll try. I'll try. I'll, I can't watch that with my wife. I want to stay married. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah understood. <laughs> Han, come watch this with me. Look at this. Yeah. Uh, no, Udo Kier, I think, is the uh, main actor's name. Uh, he yeah, has some. Udo he has some. He made choices. <laughs> they were interesting choices. <laughs> so, so what would you say is your yeah, favorite you outside of the two big series? Outside of the two big series, you know, I I really like the uh, I like the Brana film a lot, but uh, the uh, Frankenstein: The True Story, the uh, the TV episode, the okay. I think mm-hmm. it came out in the early 70s, 71, 72, maybe. Uh, with James Mason uh, that to me that to me was really you know like I watched that when I was a kid and, and I thought that was like like the news I thought that was like <laughs> holy crap this is what they're doing I, you know the way that it was presented to me was like it was like a actual biography like a documentary and I thought that's by far and away always kind of had a, a sentimental part of my heart either either that or if we were going to go into loose terms probably like the Rocky Horror Picture Show okay. because of uh because mm-hmm. uh, you know, I you know, I went to college, and you know, I was a uh, you know in the theater in college, and you know, we just you know that's what we did. We would go see the Rocky Horror every yeah. Saturday night and uh, threw rice at people. So. <laughs> yeah, both of those are on our list, but we've not gotten to them yet. Not but, yet. Uh, yeah, I'm One surprised day. none of us said Young Frankenstein. Actually, that's another kind of classic. Yeah, I'm just gonna say Young Frankenstein. Yeah, Young Frankenstein's <laughs> a great film too. Yeah. I think, uh, well, I think if if you're in more of a cut up mood, that's that's the one you go. To. Well, actually, I think when we talked about it, we said that's kind of your a primer movie, right? That's where you want to go to for like if no one's really into the super scary stuff, they just want to kind of know about Frankenstein from the uh, Universal days. It's like go see Young Frankenstein. You'll you'll have a good time. You'll be fine. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And and it's it's amazing to me how much better the humor holds up from Young Frankenstein as opposed to Abbott and Costello. I mean, Abbott and Costello kind of shticky and kind of it, it's definitely dated. Boy, yeah. I cannot put a date on, on on Young Frankenstein. That to me, it still makes me cry laughing. I mean, oh yeah, that and Blazing Saddles still make me cry. If they're on TV <laughs> at any point. That and Jaws, I'll stop and watch the entire thing. I you know I don't know what's going on. Fair enough. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I agree. So um, so, what do you have planned next? Uh, yeah. So you've got you know back to back, really close together. You put out you know the disturbingly difficult book of Universal Frankenstein trivia, and then the you know oh, okay. Hammer Frankenstein trivia. Uh, I right now I'm working well. I'm I'm uh, the EMS director of a of a school right now, so I'm getting my uh, students through the uh, through the EMT program right now. But I'm also working on the. Uh, in, uh, the uh, Universal Dracula book trivia book. So, oh, okay. so I'm going to be doing the Dracula. I'm, I'm currently on uh, the da- Dracula's daughter, and then I'll do Son of Dracula. There's not much after that because I've already covered House of Dracula. So I'll be doing the '79 version of Dracula, and uh, I'll be doing Dracula Untold, or the 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 Dracula uh, origin story that uh, Luke Evans did. Ah, oh, uh, okay, gotcha. that one. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, you know we've Universal keeps trying to reboot things lately, and they just they haven't gotten to Frankenstein again. Yeah. And it's I, I know the the Dark Universe thing fell through, but I'm still hoping <gasps> something Boy. happens. Yeah. Boy, and I, and I live in Tampa, and I was dying for that uh, Dark Universe to take off because I was hoping that they would have a greater influence in the parks of uh, of monsters. There's there's hardly anything of uh universal monsters at universal studios in orlando they just closed the monsters yeah. cafe i so, saw that i was so upset about that yeah. <laughs> so i uh, so really there's nothing there right now they may open up uh, a greater land uh, another land that it would, might have like the nintendo characters and they may have a section that they kind of have for the uh for the universal monsters so yeah that would but be yeah i was hoping that dark universe would take off yeah Maybe, maybe it'll still take off. Well, yeah, th- <laughs> they'll probably have to do something with uh, finagle it a little bit more. But you know, I agree, hundred percent. It'd be nice. <laughs> It'd be nice to have something like that. Thank you guys so much for uh, for showing my book, and I, I'm glad you liked it. I, I hope I, it was my pleasure to send it to you guys, and I love listening to your podcast. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we're we're really enjoying the books. I I, I like I've. Mostly read through your rankings. I was I was kind of scared to read the trivia. I didn't know if you were gonna like drop some trivia questions on us, and I was like, I don't want to cheat and know too much. But uh, I'm excited to dig into the trivia as well. I am scheduled to go to. It'll be. I'm uh, scheduled to do my first book signing at uh, something called Frankenfest, and Frankenfest is a it's a convention that I just learned about recently in uh, Lansing, Michigan. So in a couple of weeks, and I think it's. Hmm. Uh, June 23rd in Lansing, Michigan, I believe. There is the Frankenfest, and I'll be going out there and signing my books. And then they have another one in September in Detroit. So that's that's going to be something that uh, I'll be looking forward to. And then I will also be doing a trivia game where I'll be asking trivia questions, and I'll have hopefully six teams, and then the top three teams will get some prizes. So, oh, nice. so we'll see. We'll see. We'll have some fun out there. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm writing that down in my calendar now, by the way. <laughs> if you yeah, can make I can it find a way to get up you. there. Yeah. Frank and fast. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on. It's, been, it's been a blast talking to you. Uh, you know, we are, any any opportunity we can get to just chat about all the Frankenstein movies, we're we're always in. So this is this has been fun. Yeah, I appreciate your time. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, not there's not a lot of people that'll get my <laughs> references. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the folks, uh, you know, you can find those books. Is Amazon the best place to find them, or, or... Amazon? Yeah, Amazon.com. Okay. Okay. And yeah, I'll make sure to put some links to both of the books in the show notes and yeah. to uh, Frankenfest so that folks can find those yeah. uh, those easily. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, and uh, thank you. We'll, we'll have to. Get back with you uh, maybe down the road when you've got some more, yeah. some more books to talk about. And we'll... More trivia. Absolutely. Listen, I'll, absolutely. Uh, I'll you guys. I'm going to need to see some of that Wolfman trivia. That's all I'm saying. 
<laughs> Wolf then unfortunately did the one film. I, I, I know. I could. I, I guess I could do. Yeah. Uh, I, maybe I'll add it into the, to the okay. Dracula. I'll yeah, just throw it's it appendix. In there. Appendix A, Wolfman. There, there we go. go. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Yes, thank you, sir. All right. Thank All right. you. Have a good night. Yeah, have a good one, Paul. <laughs> and as always, to be continued. Uh, Looks like you survived another episode. The Freaking Cast is a production of FCR Media. It's hosted by Anthony Bowman and Eric Velasquez. Follow us on Twitter at The Freaking Cast or send us a letter at thefreakingcast at gmail.com. Our cover art is by Amanda Keller. You can find her at Keller Illustrations on Instagram. Our theme music is by Vivek Abhishek. Thanks for listening. <laughs>